In this video, I will walk you through the process of how I made this cinematic fantasy artwork that I named Face Your Fears 2. So let's jump straight in a blender and let me show you how I did it. Okay, so this is how it looks. This is my scene. This is how it looks in the viewport shading. So practically the render view. And we have the dragon here. We have this guy that is facing his fears. In this case, the dragon. We have really cool light from the back of the dragon. A little bit of light spill here on this part of the staircase and light from this guy right there. So the main part here, the main thing are these staircase here. And I will quickly show you how I made them. It's really simple and easy process. I will go here to the new Blender scene and I will just delete everything because I will go to the top view and start by adding a mesh and in this case circle. And circle will have well, 32. Let's see. I want this to be in between this like uh, corner to say in between and the uh, x axis. So let's go 33, 34, 34 is cool. So I want that. And I want to make the circle a little bit bigger. Like this, for example, it doesn't matter. And I will go to the vertices and just go E for extrusion and then S to scale it down. And I will go with something like this just for this example. And I will select this face right there. Control I to invert and then just delete every other face. Okay, let's go here, select it, E to extrude it a bit. So like this, and we have one stairs here. So one portion of the staircase. And now I will use array modifier to just copy it a lot. So you can see it goes like this, but I don't want to use relative offset. I want to use object offset. And for that, we need an object. So I will go with empty. Okay, and here, when I select this, I will go object offset and select my empty. So this is how it looks currently. It's not that good. Let me quickly turn on the cavity so we can better see what we are doing here. And uh, this happens just because we need to go to apply the scale. We made some transformations, made a bigger circle, etc. So just apply the scale and voila, we have it like that. Now we need to go to the empty and either go here to these settings and go with the rotation and go with the location on Z axis, or you can go to the top view and R and just rotate this. I like to go something like this and then press number three to go to the side view and G and Z and move it down on the Z axis like that. Maybe G and Z a little bit like that and R and Z and rotate it until these two lines match each other. Okay, so this is perfect. Now only thing that we need to do here is to select the stairs and go and increase the count. So we can do however we want as much as we want. You can see really simple and easy to make this staircase. So I will for this example go with something like this. It doesn't matter actually. So something like this is cool. Maybe a little bit less just for fun. All right. And uh, now if you can see here, I have this big wall below the staircase and let me show you how to make this. It's also easy, but there is one really cool trick that you need to apply. So first I will go to this stair and go to the vertex. Okay. Select this vertex and this by holding shift and just press J to join them together to make an edge, right? Then go to the edge, select it and just go out or you don't need to go out actually you just go here and say apply oh you need to go just, just go to the object view and go right there and apply the array okay now when you go back to the edges we have this big edge right there so i want to press p to separate this selection and then go back to the object and select this right there so here as you can see we have this edge that is perfectly following the shape of the staircases. Okay, now I will go to the vertex edit mode and just go E extrude and Z and pull it down. So something like this, for example, is okay. And uh, let's see if I go back to the object, we have this wall right there. So in order to make this wall right here, I will show you one really simple way. And that's to go to the face edit view, select all the faces and just go E to extrude S to scale it and then shift Z not to scale it on the Z axis and here we have it something like this, for example, and this is it. 
perfect. We have really, really cool staircase. All right, now if you look at the original staircases, you can see that there are a lot of damages on them. And I will show you now how I made it. First, there is a way to do it manually. And for that, you need to select the staircases, select uh, the face edit view, and for example, go and add an edge loop with control R, put it wherever you want, like this, for example, then go to the vertices, select this vertex, shift control B to, mer to bevel the vertex like that, for example, go back to the object view and you have one portion of a damage and now you need to do it like a lot of times on all around the staircases. This is really time consuming. I don't like that. And for that, I have really cool add on that will do this with just one click. And this is how the add on is called uh, OCD one click damage. And let me show right here, I will leave the link down there in the description if you want to get it. This is version 225 current version. And what you need to do is just select the staircases make damage and voila, here we have a beautiful damage staircases. Now it's too much and we can play here. For example, I want only 10% of damage, see, and maybe voxel size 0 0.35. And already we have beautiful result. And now you can tweak everything here, maybe noise scale 1.1, tweak and make this however you want. So this is it. Then for the second staircases, what I did, I just made a copy of this shift D. Okay. Let's press number seven, go rotate it a little bit like this. And I made it smaller and I put it there. So these are my second staircases, like you can see right here. So just a copy of this. Okay, so this is really simple, really easy way to create these kind of staircases and you can create any kind of shape and uh, as many spirals as you want. This is it. Right now, let's go back to the original file. The pillars are really simple, just a cylinder with a few extrusions of these faces right there. And this is just a simple cube with the extrusion of these four faces around and this is nothing special. Right, so we have another thing. Let's just hide this. We have a dragon here. The dragon is a model that I purchased from turbosquid.com. And it's a really cool model. I really like it. You can uh, rig it. Actually, it comes rigged. So you can just move move it however you want. And also this guy right here is a Viking that I got from CG Trader uh, com, And it's really cool. Also, it comes rigged, and you can position it however you want. So basically, this is it. Everything else here, these things right there. These are free models that I got from let me show you really quickly here from polyheaven.com. And this is the mountainside, this one. And I also got these rocks right there, a few of these rocks. Also these rocks that I put, see, right there and populate all over the screen. So we have a rock here, rock here, rock here, this, I don't know, a lot of these small rocks right there. Also this inside part of uh, like damage part here, let's switch back to render view just to better see what is this. This thing right there, this is just a simple Boolean operation. And let me show you how you can do it. I just use one of the rocks. So I will just use this one, make it a little bit bigger, move it and intersect with, with this, for example, like that, maybe a little bit bigger. And in the preferences, you just need to enable bool tool. So bool tool, just enable it. It comes with the blender default. And you just need to select the rock, select with the shift staircases and press control minus. And this is it. You can see we already have this really cool damage. So this is how I did it. And also these mountains right there is just for blocking the light. And if you go to the camera view, just to make the uh, back portion of the scene uh, complete. So this is it. Okay, now the most important thing here are the lights because lights are shaping the scene and adding the mood to the scene depends how you set up your lights, how you position them, etc. So let me walk you through the process how I set up my lighting conditions here. First, let's go to the viewport shading here to the render view. And this is how it looks without the lights. Basically, we just have the HDRI lights, it's snowy hillside from the polyheaven.com, basically a cloudy day just a soft light to add a little bit of fill light to the scene. It's only 0.1. If we turn this off, it's a pitch black. So 0.1 of the strength just to add a little, little bit of that fill light. Then the second light is the main light here to the scene is this area light, the big light that is 
casting light uh, to to light actually the dragon and this part of the staircases and if you look at here let me show you really quickly this is the big 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 this big light and these mountains here these parts are positioned like that to block the light to not relight everything else and also one cool trick about this light is that i add a gobo so here the gobo if i turn it off it will be all around so the gobo is really cool way to just uh, direct the light a little bit and add a little bit of the shadow like the light is going through the vegetation right here you have different gobos in blender it's by default here and also the spread i just restricted to 15 percent the default is 180 percent and it's like this so i want really nice 15 percent beamed light to the dragon and this is how it looks okay the other area light here that i add is just a small light that is lighting this part of the staircases because i want the viewer attentions to also uh, be here on this part right there because later i will add some skeleton here and this is how it looks this is really small light right there as you can see okay and also it has a different gobo it has a window gobo so you can change here between caustics vegetation and windows and also the spread is on 20 percent and we have another light all the way down it's a point light on the viking this will be the light from the torch currently there is no fire but i will add it later and the fire will obviously light up this part right there and now if you look at the scene it doesn't look that much it's cool but it's not there yet we are missing one more important thing and that's the fog or how to say the atmosphere right there so for that i just use a cube it's right there i just use a big big cube this one that i make it so big so everything else is fit inside the cube and i add a material that is actually principal volume shader i deleted the principal bsdf shader that comes default here with the a uh, new material and just add this one with the density 0.01 and anisotrophy with 0.554 so this doesn't matter to be exactly but the point with the anisotrophy, uh, anisotrophy is that uh, the zero here means that the fog or the atmosphere is distributed equally all over the scene if you go more towards the one it will be more dense uh, at the light source so if you go to minus one it will be denser away from the light source if i can say like that so i like to be something around 0 0.5 something like i did right there 0 0.554 and this is how it looks so before adding the fog and after adding this volume effect so this is really drastical difference and this is the main photo now everything else that I did and that you see here on the screen as a final result is the post processing that I did in Photoshop and I have a full tutorial on that you can watch it on the link right there it's on my second channel where I'm teaching people how to create amazing photo manipulations see you there bye bye